let's familiarize ourselves with Zoom Player right click context menu. To get this menu it's quite obvious, you just right click the video area or any other area of the player actually. You, you can see all the options you have accessible from the right click menu. You have the open file dialog which allows you to start playing files right away. You see, uh, we can open uh, show media files, only video files, only audio files, only playlist. Uh, you can actually select subtitles and open the, a subtitle for playing movie through this dialogue. Uh, you can only show CD audio files, only images, or basically show any, any type of file. Next, you have the more advanced open dialogue, which allows you to open directories, open entire drives. Opening a drive is useful uh, mainly for playing DVDs or Blu-ray Blu drives, or if you have uh, a disk full of images, but don't do it on drives that have um, uh, just generic data because uh, it can cause uh, various issues which you don't really want to deal with because some um, data files have the same file extensions as media files and trying to open them would just uh, take a long time and basically does nothing for you. You can also uh, open a URL, this is for streaming, uh, you can put shoutcast URL or MMS streaming URLs in here. You can open a web page, this is sort of like a browser within Zoom Player. Um, here you can eject your uh, CD drive, you can select, if you have multiple drives, you can select which one gets ejected in the options dialog. Here you can have um, play pause functionality. I'll pause right here actually uh, to show you that several of these have characters li listed next to them. Basically what the character said is that clicking this character or character combination uh, will perform the same function as you see listed here. So if I click O on the keyboard, it will show the open file dialog. Okay, here you can go full screen. This is basically like clicking this button here. Uh, you can minimize a player. This uh, uh, function allow you uh, to the interlace video. This is a bit more complex, uh, uh, complex feature, but basically when you have video that shows combing artifacts, which means like you see a sort of a horizontal comb when the picture uh, pans, this can help uh, reduce this uh, sort of artifact. Here you can choose that the player stays on top of other applications. Uh, and now we get to the more advanced uh, control section. Here you, you, have, you can open the audio equalizer, uh, the color controls, you can show the control bar and you can open various interfaces like uh, playing information which shows you uh, information about the currently playing file. You can open the playlist editor, you can open uh, the chapter editor allowing you uh, to create uh, virtual bookmarks within media files. Uh, you can open the scene cut editor which allows you to do virtual edits uh, to media files. Uh, by this I mean you can Cre uh, modify how the media, play uh, media file plays without actually modifying the file itself. What it does is create an external script file uh, which instructs Zoom Player how to play this file. Uh, next you have uh, the Media Library Path Editor which allows you to specify which directories or folders on your uh, drive or network uh, to be, uh, should be shown within the Media Library. Uh, this uh, station manager uh, allows you to create uh, your favorite uh, uh, streaming uh, radio or uh, streaming MMS stations. Uh, skin selector, the skin selector allows you to switch the player's skins. Uh, the go to dialogue allows you to quickly go to any position in the video uh, or audio file actually. Uh, the play history uh, is used to show you which items you've, you've played previously and you can 
easily use it to replay them if they are still at, uh, if the file still exists. And finally, for this section, you have uh, the create contact sheet, which can create a um, thumbnail uh, taken from uh, the currently playing video. Uh, the entire navigate section is opening is to open various um, uh, zoom player full screen navigation uh, interfaces uh, which are designed for full screen use but uh, they work actually quite well within a window as well uh, you can see there's some duplication between the navigation interface and the standard interface um, because the navigation in all the navigation interfaces are based on a five-click design, uh, which basically means you, they all are all function by pressing either up, down, left, right, or enter for select. Um, as you can see, let's open a sample uh, navigation interface. I'll use the image resize, which is has been renamed in this new version. Uh, to the adjust image dialog. This uh, I'm going to navigate using the keyboard right now. As you can see, I'm pressing down to go through the list and you can modify various options. This is just one of the many full screen uh, navigation interface Zoom player uses. Um, other, uh, other interfaces accessible right now. Let's talk about um, the aspect ratio. Right now, uh, the video is in derived mode, which is the recommended mode. The derived is named for deriving the, the resolution automatically. Uh, it uh, takes the resolution from the source material, but it also can take the resolution from several other sources, like uh, one of the features Zoom player, the Zoom player possesses is the ability to do minute uh, fixes to aspect ratio when the video was slightly recorded out of aspect ratio so in derived mode zoom player would, will automatically try to correct the aspect ratio uh, but you can see other source, uh, other uh, aspect ratio modes such as widescreen and um, anamorphic these modes are corrective modes they are usually used uh, for when the video was really badly encoded and you want to set uh, a manual aspect ratio. Uh, this is the stream selection interface. Uh, this is for videos with subtitles. Um, this video has, you can see, some, if you have multiple audio tracks, you can choose them from here. If you have subtitle tracks, you can usually, usually choose, choose them here. Um, the filter property page shows you uh, the current components used to display this video and can show you information about uh, uh, how to how they are played. Um, for example, uh, this and this is a FFmpeg video decoder, which you configure through this inter you can configure through this interface. Uh, basically. Uh, in the filter properties, any item which is uh, not uh, not uh, enabled is bas basically mean that this uh, component does not have a configuration page or information page. Uh, if it is enabled, it means you can click it uh, and see information. For example, for this audio audio render, you can it tells you the audio quality, the number of channels, etc. Here you can choose to, uh, to switch the player configuration to audio mode. You can also do it with F2 key or with this button. And this um, switches to DVD mode. Here you can open the options and finally you can close the player. I hope you have enjoyed this tutorial and hope it was informative. Have a good day.